Hey everybody, this is Hans from Dakota Angler and Outfitter in Rapid City, South Dakota. And today I'm going to tie a version of a Bow River Bugger that's done really well for me. We've got some high water right now in the Black Hills uh, on our trout streams. Um, not so high that it's not fishable, but they're a little up and off color. And this is a time where we try to get some fish to move to the fly by throwing some streamers. And this particular pattern has worked well for me in those kinds of conditions here, but has also been a productive fly for me on the North Platte and up on the Missouri River, and has been a good smallmouth fly too. So I've got a 1710 Daiichi hook, uh, size 6. It's a nice stout hook with a big wide gap. I got a cone head in. This one happens to be a tungsten cone head. First thing I'm going to do is just tie in a little flash underneath the tail. Just going to take some crystal flash fibers, tie those down. And then I'm going to take a barred rabbit strip, tie in a short section for the tail. Catch that right at the back. <clears throat> so now I've got a barred rabbit strip with a little crystal flash underneath. I'm going to take some gold colored Estas. Tie that in <clears throat> up at the front of the hook just to give it some some strength there. Tie it back to the the front. And as I wrap S styles, what I like to do is <clears throat> just make sure that as I make each wrap, I fold back the preceding wrap. Just kind of make sure that you get a nice full body out of it. You're not trapping too many of those fibers. as you wrap. It's pretty easy with any of these long chenilles to trap down the fibers. And you kind of end up with a, a body that looks a little matted down. Okay, we're going to get close to the to the cone, but we need to leave a little room behind that cone so that we can put on a little deer hair collar and do a couple other things here. I'm going to tie that Estaz off. I didn't put any hackle on this fly. You could if you wanted to. To give it a little bit of fullness, kind of suggest some hackle. But also give it some cool kind of trapped air and movement. I'm going to take a couple of kind of tannish brown CDC feathers and just tie that in kind of as an overwing, kind of make it a little bit flat to the top of the hook there. So it's tied directly on the top of the hook. Trim off the excess. <clears throat> Alright, put in a couple feathers there on the top. Just kind of match them so that they're angled at the same angle. Kind of facing one another. Pull that one in. It's a little longer than the other. Kind of veils the body a little bit. Next thing I'm going to do is take some of these chrome silly legs, tie in two strands on the near side, and I'm going to fold that over, tie in two strands on the far side. Okay, make sure they're hanging off the side of the hook. Now I'm ready to do a little deer hair collar. 
I've got some deer hair in a hair stacker. And I'm going to do this in two stages. Once I get it stacked, I'm going to do the bottom and then I'll do the top. So once everything's all neat, I'm going to tip my vise upside down. I want the collar to go back about touching the hook point. I'm just set this clump. I might pause. I'm gonna I got some 140 denier thread on. I'm gonna tie this off and just switch to a little heavier duty thread for this collar just to make sure that I don't break my thread. Okay I've got some gel spun thread in that I can do this collar with and not worry about my thread breaking. So I got my tips about even with the hook point there. I like to do a fairly fat collar on this because otherwise it doesn't look very full. So this is almost a half a pencil thick diameter uh, clump of hair. Got it on the bottom. I'm just going to run a few wraps through it and get it nice and tight. You see it's flared well. Spin the hook back over. Grab an equal size clump for the top. I'm going to restack that just a little bit. Had them ready to go, but if you handle hair too much outside of the stacker, it quickly gets uneven. Okay. I'm going to measure that out so it's equal. Set that right on top of the other clump. Make a couple of wraps. Cinch that down. You can kind of weave one more wrap in there. Make sure it's got nice and tight. Now, I'm going to sneak my gel spun in front of that hair. Wrap a few wraps in front of the cone. I'm keeping the tension on. Now, I'll just throw in a couple half hitches in front of the cone. Tighten those up and then I should be able to trim off my thread. And then the easiest way to finish this collar is with a razor blade. So I'll take my razor blade, I just got a double edged razor blade, and I'm just going to follow the cone and just kind of cut shallow first. Don't get too carried away because you can cut right through your collar. Just follow the cone, trimming back. And all you're looking for is just a little cylinder of trimmed hair before you get to your collar. So you're just trimming out those thicker butt hair or butt ends of the hair and leave in the tips for your collar. Just kind of work your way around until you've trimmed off those butt ends. There are always going to be a few that kind of find their way in there and stay in there. You could just pluck those off or trim them out with your scissors later. But now you've got your collar, and you can go ahead <clears throat> just make sure your silly legs are split so that they're apart. You've got your CDC in there to kind of add some 
some fullness there and add a little bit of trapped air. Kind of give it a little sneak this hair out of here. So there you have my version of a Bow River Bugger. You can see it's got that little deer hair collar, the rubber legs, and it's pretty darn effective fly. I've had good luck with this fly for for streamer fishing for trout, but also for smallmouth bass. Again, I'm Hans from Dakota Angler and Outfitter, and we just finished tying my version of the Bow River Bugger. You can find this fly and others at flyfishsd.com, and you can buy the materials to tie these flies at flyfishsd.com. Thanks for watching.